Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, again, I am so happy to say I am here with uh, Sheikh Umar Zaid. Um, even though he keeps saying in his interviews, I'm not a typical scholar, but uh, we know the definition uh, in the Quran for a scholar is the one who fears Allah. And so um, I'll just leave it at that. So, uh, 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 Dr. Umar, I want to ask you about, uh, I want to start off by talking about how I am thinking about certain things and, uh, and, and, and you can correct me from there. And so the first question I have is that even though I'm not an expert in uh, virology or uh, regarding vaccines, or I'm not an expert regarding 5G, I'm not ex an expert in regarding a lot of the fields that are out there, but in general, when I'm looking at the bird's eye view of things, of what's happening in the world, uh, even with what's about to happen in terms of economics, uh, the, the situation we're running into, when I'm looking at the entire scenario, even though I'm not an expert of a particular thing, but when I'm looking at the bird's eye view, it's, it's showing me things are in, in a coherent way moving in a certain direction. You know, this would also include things like a surveillance state, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so is this a right way of looking at it? Uh, how would you, would you or why don't I just give the floor to you? Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. May Allah grant us his refuge here in this moment um, that we may clarify our thoughts in this realm. Yes, you are correct. Uh, it's a general statement which you which you make. That is that it's all going in a certain direction, and that is true. I am shocked uh, to tell you the truth of the recent events. As I see what's happening to the entire globe, I am just amazed at the stupidity that is being manifested by leadership and by the populace and by experts, so-called experts uh, at the same time. I'm shocked because I didn't expect, and I think none of us expected such a move on the part of the cult, if you will, at the top of the pyramid, this Let's, for want of a better word, let's just use the term Illuminati, uh, because that has historical relevance and actuality. It is a cult. Uh, people think that uh, historians will say, well, it died out 50 years after its inception by Adam Weishaupt in the 18th century, late 18th century, but that's not true. These cults come and go uh, by name only. In actuality, the entire demonic influence and set of values and protocols and uh, demons and jinn along with it are handed father to son, father to son. It is a legacy and it's well protected. So this has been going on. It's been growing since that triumvirate I told you about. Uh, joined, was started uh, at the same time that Adam Weishaupt founded the Illuminati. So this group has now made a move which has been predicted in very many ways uh, over the last uh, decades, um, both officially and unofficially, both in administrative uh, protocols and letters and addendums and amendments and meetings and whatnot, and also in Hollywood predictive um, yeah. uh, movies. All of this has been predicted. We, I mean, we're all familiar with the viral movies, okay, mm -hmm. this contagion and all this sort of thing. And so this has been predicted. I just didn't expect it to happen on such a scale and so quickly. OK, so what that uh, what that illustrates is how well the cult is organized and how well they have infiltrated the government systems all over the world. Uh, 
hmm. including all controlled oppositions. You know, the Hegelian dialectic that's still going on between East and West and communism and democracy and so, so forth and so on. Putin is just as guilty as the others. Oh, now some people might not want to hear that, but because Putin appears such, to be such a fine, uh, reserved and refined gentleman, okay, and diplomat. He's the diplomat of diplomats right now for the mm -hmm. whole world. But that's on purpose. Iblis has set him up. Iblis has set him up just like Iblis set Hitler up. The cult sets these people in place. They use idealism. They use uh, polished individuals who've been programmed from the cradle uh, to go in a certain direction. And when you see some of these people speaking um, in public in defense of a certain position, many of them actually believe what they're doing. Hmm. Okay. You listen to someone, for example, I don't know if you remember Walter Cronkite, yeah. who directed Americans, uh, you know, in the newsreels mm -hmm. on a daily basis for years. He was yeah. finally giving global recognition for that. Mm -hmm. And he jokingly at a meeting when he received a final award in his old age, I was, he was an octogenarian by then. He admitted that he was proud to stand on the side of Satan. Now, he said this jokingly, but the fact of the matter is that's what he did. Mm -hmm. you see. And he may or may not, someone like him may or may not have been aware of what he was doing. Most are not, but there is certain amongst the leadership that are. Madam Clinton, she knows exactly what she's doing. Okay? Right. That one is a real witch. OK, and she should be at the stake uh, and uh, not raw. OK, fully and totally burnt to a crisp, that one. And in eternity, that will be her fate over and over and over again. And I hope she's listening because there's always a chance to repent. Mm -hmm. Always. OK, before the final moment. Uh, now. I said all that just to reinforce your impression. As uninformed as it may be, it's correct. Okay. So, yes, this is an organized impetus to take over the world. And in fact, they have. Okay. They have done it. I just had a correspondence with an Iranian professor whose work I edit from time to time. And this professor uh, has been uh, asked to write a paper on this COVID experiment uh, or this COVID experience. And uh, she's not a medical doctor. She's not, she, she's just a professor of history, but they've asked her to write and she's asked me uh, for some, some guidance in the matter. And then she asked me this pointed question. She says, I have to get to the crux of the matter. And I said, well, the crux of the matter is this. They're using this as a backdoor to reduce regional and national autonomy. Mm. Okay. So they're robbing everyone's freedom, including the freedom of the leaders to do what they think is the better option, to mm. take the better option. Okay. Because, you, you know, the crowd momentum, when, once a crowd starts going in a certain direction, you better get out of the way if you don't want to run with them, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they will trample you. And many leaders are cooperating because they know they will be trampled, <laughs> right. you see. Mm -hmm. Others are cooperating because they're part of the club. They're Freemasons or they're, they're compromised, uh, they're... They're secret sinners whose secret sins are known by the Israelis who have everyone's back door. OK, mm -hmm. and part of the problem here or part of what they're facilitating with this whole covid thing is an organized technocratic uh, takeover of all the world's technology, because all of the Internet of Things 
all of the communications, the satellites, including the 5G, and control of all of these things, all these roads now lead to Rome by way of Tel Aviv. Mm. Okay, that is what's taking place. And because this is an international coup, mm. and it's a fairly benign one when you talk. Wow, inter- that is such a powerful word, an international coup. Yeah, that's what's taking place. That is, that's, that's what uh, it is. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very, I think, a very appropriate word. Uh, and, and a very yeah. meaningful word. Yeah, I'm not the first to come up with that. Uh, although I was thinking in these terms, but that's uh, essentially what it is. And it's a bloodless coup for the most part. They have used, you, you remember that I told you uh, in our initial uh, uh, interviews that um, they want to control the narrative, okay? Mm-hmm. And by controlling the narrative, they then control the will of the people. Right. And this is associated with a form of idolatry, which is associated with the mother goddess. And this is also associated with her son, uh, an, an individual called Attis or Mithras. Now, mm. in this was adopted by uh, the elitist of the military in the Roman cult system. The Romans were the great accretionist. And you'll recall that I told you that this cult, occult network was transferred to Rome uh, via Pergamum. Now, Pergamum is in ancient Turkey, Anatolia, mm. and these are the people, the cult, the corrupt Jews and Medes who were chased out of Babylon uh, by Darius, okay? okay? And they then went to Rome, and the part of this cult uh, is uh, the the goddess and her son, and her son becomes her lover. So you have the mother of God and his wife, <laughs> mm. and the son of God. Now, uh, so this trust character is seen, uh, his birthday was on de- December 25th, and he's seen in ancient depictions riding a bull, grabbing it by the horn, and stabbing the bull to death. Mm. Okay. Now, the bull represents several things in the metaphysical stream of thought, one of them being mankind's will. Okay. So what they're doing is they're controlling the narrative in order to guide or misguide the will of the people. And that's part of the occult principle here that is represented by this form of idolatry. Now, if you take that thinking a step further, and I think many of your listeners will appreciate this, and most people who study these things do not appreciate these things, uh, and that gives us the blood sacrifice, okay? Mm. So that uh, a person, for example, Christians, are pleading daily the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Well, in the Roman system that worshipped the mother goddess by means of this a uh, cult figure, Mithras, whom I just mentioned, her son, the bull was sacrificed in a special uh, place called the Torabolium. Now, mm. the Torabolium ha- uh, is where the bull was taken and stood on top of a grate, if you will. The uh, person who offered the sacrifice to this god stood and and the bull was slaughtered, came down and baptized. They baptized that person with the blood of the bull. Okay. And he was said to be born again. So okay. he then received the spirit of the God, became the hero, became the Ubermensch, became the hero of Nietzsche, became the Ubermensch of Hitler, and uh, took control of his life. Okay. But this is a. Uh, This is a delusion, and it's a rather strong delusion. So you have various cults out there, and they say, well, may the spirit of Christ be in you. 
But this Christ, you see, is it was never the son of Miriam's name. Okay, Mary did not have a son named Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. She had a son named what well, in in the Aramaic we say Isa or, or Arabic we say Isa, and in the Judaic terms they say Yahushua. Okay, mm -hmm. where and uh, this is the uh, this is a name that means Yahushua actually means salvation is of the creator mm. or is of god okay salvation belongs to god mm. not to jesus <laughs> mm. right so these people are taking this blood baptism and they're saying well may the spirit of christ be in you well this isn't this is a sigil this is a ritual that allows the jinn to have free will free reign in, in the individual souls and the Christians, as well-meaning as they are, they don't know what this actually is. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's actually taking place. Otherwise, they would not have slaughtered. They would not have slaughtered the, the indigenous people all over the world in the name of God. You see, they would never have done that had they been in their right minds and in control of their will as servants of the mm -hmm. Almighty. Mm. Okay, am I making sense to you? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. So that, that's what's taking place here. They are using this, this concept, this idolatrous concept, to kill the will of the people and baptize them with a false narrative. Mm. Okay? I get it. Now, yes. I, I mean, magically, that is what was happening. And this is the highest form of magic. The highest form of magic is to control the narrative and then misguide the people. Mm. And that's what's taking place. And I'm just shocked to see how it is occurring on a global basis. Mm. I cannot tell you how amazed I am. So this is a very, very grave occurrence. It's not to be taken lightly. It is a coup. Uh, that is that is more than just um, a replacement of government. It's a complete and total change. Mm. You mentioned before something of uh, this is the new normal. Mm. Well, it's it's a new abnormal. It's a new yeah. level of normality. Okay? That's what it is. And it's global. It's never been global like this before. Never. Yes, that's true. Yeah. We've had some world wars, but even in those world wars, there were there were places of refuge. For example, I I was in Europe many years ago, forty years ago, and I actually went to some valley uh, in the the border region in the Alsace region between uh, France and Germany, where people had, had lived. And they had no idea that there was a war, that wars had taken place, either the First or the Second World War. Hmm. And they're right in the center of Europe. And these villages were never touched by a bomb. Nobody's son was killed, da, 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 da. Hmm. Okay. I was amazed to find this out. There are places of refuge in the earth, probably now still today, but never has the cult of Mithras of Rome spread its wings so wide to engulf the globe. Mm. And when you think about this metaphysically, it's not just metaphysically, it's actually physically. They've got satellites all over the place now. Yes. And that's... this brings us to another level of your concern here with respect to 5G. Now, do you have another question? Do you want to say something or, sh or shall I go on? No, I, in fact, just yesterday I was thinking about the role of satellites in all of this, and it seems to be, you know, the verse of the Quran, Min kulli um, I've always, I actually have probably a video where I actually talk about that verse could possibly be talking about satellites. Uh, but that's, you know, that's one of the many definitions where... Uh, but but yeah, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, which is uh, Ban Israel or uh, New Jerusalem. Yes, yeah, they, 
that they will have control of coming from every uh you know from every from every height is the normal translation yes yes well that's a literal this that's a a literal reality hadab, hadab is also used for a kite you know when you uh put up a kite it's also used yes. for that yes. so uh it could be also understood in terms of you know when I guess the European Jews left the world on the plains to go to Jerusalem. It could also fit that meaning. It could also fit the meaning of when they are, because it has the meaning of both going up as well as coming down. So something that, you know, like satellite waves that go up and yes. come down. And what's interesting is that, you know, so Kahf also mentions wave upon waves. So this, this concept is yes. there within yeah. the tradition. That's what these are. They are waves. They're frequency waves. Yeah. And it's it's literally true in every sense. And but this has been going on now for the last century and uh, or more, especially since the advent of electricity. Now, let's just discuss that a minute, because this is the first time in the history of the world uh, during this Holocene period, uh, in which this technology has been uh, widespread. Okay, so we're talking about electricity, and electricity is not benign. Mm. It's dangerous. Uh, it has its effect on the human body that has gone unnoticed, for the most part, by uh, most people and even by scientists. Now, in the last few decades, scientists are finally catching on to some problems with not just, I'm not, I'm talking not that now just about the electromagnetic fields hmm. that are generated by electricity and not necessarily uh, microwave or 5G technology, which only complicates things. Hmm. These electromagnetic fields affect everything if we, if we think about it consequently, which most people don't, the human body, the human being, is a manifestation of organized electromagnetic fields mm. with a very fine form and specific functions mm. all united in Tawhid. Mm. <laughs> yeah. The electric magnetism that has been created is, um, we can say to a certain degree, is unnatural, although it is a normal development of technology and human ingenuity. What's not, mm, what's incorrect about it is our blasé acceptance of it mm. without realizing uh, the several effects that it can have that are negative in nature, okay? For example, in my book on my new book on marriage, the primacy of uh, heterosexual marriage, I talk a lot about uh, the relationship between the male and the female, uh, sexuality, sexology, if you will, and the psychology and the psychiatry of it all, and also some of the physics. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the physics that's involved is uh, um, is, is, is subatomic, subatomic, okay? Mm. When a man and a woman come together, uh, they need to be complementary, okay? Mm -hmm. Complementary. They cannot be conflicting, okay? Mm. They need to complement each other. So, but this complement basis, in reality, there are tensor uh, uh, um, vibrational configurations at the subatomic level that have to meet in complementarity, okay? Mm -hmm. In order for the human being, being to complete himself, the human being is only completed in marriage, mm -hmm. in marriage, not outside of marriage. Outside of marriage, you're sort of like half of what you could be or mm -hmm. who you should be uh, cognitive wise. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, these tensile, uh, 
uh, vibrational configurations are very specific. They control all of the chemistry throughout the entire body. So mm. much so that uh, it's a difference between health and illness. Mm. Okay, marriage alone, without electricity, without the, <laughs> without the uh, uh, electrochemical influence that is, uh, can be negative or toxic, okay? So if you add an electrical environment to a toxic marriage and then put 5G on top of it, plus a false narrative, oh my God, you couldn't be any further from Allah unless you were in hell. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. That, that doesn't, <clears throat> that's an encapsulation. You know, no, yeah. the specifics. The specifics are very uh, are, are are there, and they they've been worked out, and they're still being worked out. But most people are not aware of these things. <clears throat> I have uh, I have noticed that you know, like if I take a radio uh, right oh. now and turn it on, and I have all this filth that's here in the air, I just can't yes. hear it unless I have this antenna here, right? Yeah. And. Uh, and I've I've noticed as I do uh, do rukia, do jinn work, you know, help people with jinn situations. I've yeah. noticed where there is more of these, uh, you can say, wave with filth. Yes, uh, it's harder to work on the patient than if you yes. take them to a place that um, that doesn't have these electrical magnetical fields. And in yeah. fact, I'm. Uh, asking the, one of the masjids I go to to buy jammers for, for yes. cell phones and stuff because I really think that at some level they are affecting uh -huh. us our prayers and our spirituality and our pondering uh -huh. and reflection um, and to have a space where you know there, that none of that negative waves uh -huh. are in there I don't, you know so that's just at an experimental level that I'd also like to look at that and the effect of something like that um I think it would, along those lines, it would be very interesting if you got the cooperation of a, of a, a masjid uh, to turn everything off, okay? All of the Wi-Fi, all of the cell phones, absolutely off, okay? Wow. During, uh, during a, a prayer, okay? Mm -hmm. during, during every approach to Allah, okay? And I bet you, you will find a big difference. And that still, the mosque is still going to be surrounded by uh, these um, influences, but they will not be consciously bringing them in. Right. See? Now, let's just talk about this principle here. We talked already about the principle of the sigil. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the Second World War and to the first uh, atom bomb. And there was a fellow, I'm forgetting his name now, but he was a physicist intimately related with the development of the bomb. And he was an active uh, Satanist. Mm. He was close enough to the developers of the bomb and intimate enough with the process as part of the design team to actually put a sigil, a living sigil from a sacrificed infant, a part of that, into the bum. Mm. And then they recited a mantra and a prayer, a curse over that bomb, so that when it went off, it would send this throughout the entire globe. Wow. Okay. So he marked the globe as a primal high priest, as a chief high priest of the cult. Okay. The word Falak in Arabic means to split, ah, yeah. which is very interesting. So, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ I seek refuge from the Lord of, of the one that allows things to split. Yeah. Oh. From the evil that he has created. Yes. And and then right after that, it mentions, um, you know, the, the blowing of knots and doing magic. Yeah. Yeah. So, when you were explaining this, that brought that to my mind that, that's you know, it. there's a bomb that blows <laughs> up and splits, and in yes. it is magic. Yes, uh, yes, my brother. This is this is the core of it, and none of the alim are talking about these things. 
It's as if they don't exist. And because they are not talking about them, they're not cognizant of them, they have no protection against it, you see. And so when we talk about this thing, I, I brought that uh, example up uh, because that is what's taking place now, but on a more magnified level mm. and on a more intense level, because these electromagnetic fields and frequencies with which we are bombarded are fragmenting our electromagnetic being mm. okay? and cutting us off from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Okay? This is another reason that the prophet said, go and live in the mountain. Take mm. your goats and go and live in the mountain far away from these people, far mm. away from the cities. Mm. Okay. Now, now you say that to somebody today, they'll be like, have you gone mad? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. and I think Muslims, uh, astaghfirullah, but Muslims would be very stubborn too, even mm -hmm. more stubborn than some non Muslims, I think. Uh, yeah. In, in, they have in, best, vested interest in the cities now. You see? Yeah, that's everybody's basically vested. Our point. Yeah. Everybody's invested and infested. <laughs> Because what we're talking about is infestation of jinn. Yeah. Okay. And when you're going to do rokia, when you're going to deal with these jinn, you'll find what you described is a fragmentation of being. Okay. That you that person that you're doing the rokia for has been infested, and this is more than a virus. <laughs> okay. It's more dangerous. Yeah, Dr. Omar, I wanted to share with you about reading Rukia. So when we read Quran, right, it creates vibrations. Yes. And that vibration hits that person. And then that vibration has an effect uh, of the, on the shaitan that's inside that person. And he yes. then wants to run because that vibration is, is not, he can't take it. And so he wants to run. But yes. now with all these negative vibrations all over the place, it's almost like they have this shield. Against yes, they do. The Quran, against my reading, of, not the Quran. That's and you, the you're experiencing that. You're experiencing it firsthand now because yes. they are shielded. The individual is now infested with these electromagnetic fields. Now, if you were to take that 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 same individual, take them out into the a mountain top or a forest region far from the city, you would have a, an easier time of dealing with that jinn. OK, mm. uh, because the electromagnetic uh, frequencies would not be shielding him. Let's just, you know, that is so interesting that you just said yeah. that, because that reminded me of one of the sheikhs that I studied with uh, his sheikh. So mm -hmm. when the cities were still there, but in the olden days, like I'm talking about the 1940s, the 1930s, the ulama, they used to do this. And I don't think we do it anymore. But they used to do this, that when they saw somebody having a jinn issue, they would take them outside the city, outside the village, into, um, into a, a place that doesn't have any of this. And then they would read the Qur'an on them, and then they would tell them yes. to take a bath over there and all the other stuff that goes along with it. Yes, because ultimately, Allah's refuge is granted to the individual. Mm. And the individual has to maintain that divine order. Yes. You see, if the individual is out of divine order, there's no protection. There's no refuge from Allah. The angels turn their back. You see, yeah. and it doesn't matter how many rokia you pray. Uh, as soon as you go away, that jinn's coming back. OK, now I want to talk about what, just one thing here. And this goes back to what we call the TVCs the tensor vibrational configurations. Those TVCs at the human level are specific. They're specific for organs. They're specific for entire organ systems. They're specific for the brain. They're specific for sexual relationships. They're specific for spiritual relationships. So mm. that when you recite in the Quran, there's a certain electromagnetic field that goes out and affects these tensor vibrational configurations at the subatomic level. Okay. Mm. 
These are subatomic configurations I'm talking about. The subatomic configurations, they're like lock and key, okay? So that when the jinn receives these vibrations in an unhid, uninhibited field, he cannot stand the assault mm -hmm. and he has to leave, okay? Because his tensor vibrational configurations, his electromagnetic field is incompatible with the Quran and with mm -hmm. the emanations coming from you as the reciter, as the vehicle, as the caliph at that mm -hmm. moment in that place. Okay, so he has to go. We're getting down to the metaphysical science of it now. And I'm bringing this up because the Alim have abandoned the science. Mm. The people of Iblis have applied it. <laughs> they've studied it and they've applied it. And this is what's causing the fragmentation mm. that you, uh, you mentioned and that the Quran warned us about. Okay, then when they create the things that fragment people, they tie the knots <laughs> so mm -hmm. that people can't get out of this fragmented situation unless they untie the knots. Mm -hmm. And if you want to untie some of these knots, part of the uh, untying of the knots is getting rid of getting rid of the people who tie them. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so that if the Ummah, for example, is infiltrated by practitioners of magic, it doesn't matter how many rokia you, 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 you make. Mm. You see, God is not going to get rid of them. That's your job as caliph. Mm -hmm. See, this is the sunnah. <laughs> the example here is that of the prophet, okay, and the initial pristine Islam, which was meant to reinstate the promise or fulfill the promise given to Ibrahim. This is one of the reasons that at the end of al fatir we and at the end of our, our prayer, we, we bless uh, uh, the prophet in the same manner that we would bless Ibrahim, mm. because there's a completion that took place there. Yes. Now, give me, give me a minute to explain this so that your listeners can understand. What the prophet did was fulfill an ancient prophecy that was made to Ibrahim that the land of Ibrahim would be given to Muhammad. Okay, mm. Isa said this, and I write about this in my book on the Gospel of Barnabas. He made it very, very clear, okay, that this was taking place and that Muhammad was the man to fulfill this promise. Mm. Now, yes, Islam is to spread into the whole world, but the initial pristine Islam was to fulfill the promise made to Ibrahim that his son, his people, would have complete control of Canaan, mm. uh, the promised land. That is what greater Israel is all about now. But these mm. are not this, this is not the promise and fulfillment to Islam. So you're saying you're saying something very interesting. You are saying that the Omar, the Khalifa Omar taking over mm. Jerusalem is in the Bible, and you know where it is? Yes, I, I used to know where it is. I, I'm not familiar with the verses. Well, yeah, but but I wrote but about I always this used to think when the, you read the story of Omar entering Jerusalem, the Christians, they had it, and they said, you know, it's in our books that you're going to come take over, yeah, and they yeah. peacefully hand it over. And yeah. I always used to think, I wish I could find that part of the Bible where these prophecies <laughs> are there. Yes. You're saying it, you know it, where you've seen them. Yeah, I, I, I wrote the book more than 10 years ago now. It's in my, my book, Trinity. Okay. All the verses related to that are in the book, uh, Trinity, the Metamorphosis of Myth. I can't quote them now. now uh, no, now. no, that's fine. But that's fine. Let, let, let me, back, let, yeah, okay. I want to fulfill this, complete this idea, though. You see, Muslims made a mistake, okay? They tried to become an imperium mm. afterwards. They were only promised the promised land. They were not promised the world as their caliphate. Not the, not the entire world, no. They were promised the promised land, mm. okay? From there, Islam was to spread out to cover the world. 
not the Arabs. Right. <laughs> not Arab okay. imperialism, which has left yes. a very bad taste. So Arab imperialism destroyed Islam. Hmm. Okay. It destroyed that promise and it reverted back to the Jews now. Now, this, not, this is not an act of destiny, uh, or this was something, this, God did not decree that this is going to happen. God knew it would happen, okay? Mm. Because he knows the heart of men, and he knew that they would make this mistake, and these are absolute divine spiritual laws. When you break the law, then the law inverts, mm. okay? It becomes the opposite. You remember, you recall, the Quran said, as long as you do this, and the prophet made this in his last, in his last speech uh, after the, the final visit to Mecca, and he told everybody, if you do this, if you do that, you keep my word, you do these things, then Allah gives you dominion, mm -hmm. okay? But that dominion was there in the promised land, not mm -hmm. in other lands, mm -hmm. okay? Let me give you an analogy, okay? Let's just say that I'm the happy Muslim and I'm the happy Arab who has my dominion in, um, in uh, Palestine, the promised land, and I come to visit you in uh, Kuala Lumpur as a merchant, okay? Which is what happened years ago. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I share with you Islam and you become a Muslim. Okay, does that give me any right to tell you what to do in your house? No, of course not. Did that give me right to your wife, to your children, to your possessions? No. To, to tax you? <laughs> mm. No, no. You see, Arabs made a big bloody mistake. Mm. Okay when they overstep the bounds and they overstep Euphrates because the Euphrates River was the dividing line for the promised mm -hmm. land. And so was the Nile, okay? And the Egyptians, when they rose up against Uthman, they rose up righteously, mm -hmm. okay? Because this is spiritual law. The Arabs were given the promised land. They were not given Egypt. Mm -hmm. They were not given Iran. They were not given India. Okay, what happened after that is you had a big game for the last thousand years of the cons keeping up with the cons. Okay, mm -hmm. this is not spiritual. It is not Islam. It's absolute madness. And because of this, the entire kingdom, the entire dominion, according to what the prophet said in his last speech at Mecca, was went into default. Mm. Okay, and that is what the Muslims are experiencing now. And God help those who don't want to admit this. <laughs> okay, mm. because that's the reality. Once you admit what the fault is, what you admit what the sin is, and you perform tawbah, even if you thought it was correct. <laughs> you know, if, if you thought like an Arab imperialist, you sinned. Mm -hmm. Against Allah, you you sinned against the final uh, speech of the prophet. You see, mm -hmm. oh my God, uh, Doctor Omar, but you're not a classically trained Islamic scholar. How can you have such insight? How can you say such things? Mm -hmm. I can't help not saying them. <laughs> okay, because. Why does it happen to me? Because I knew what came before. Right. I knew what Islam completed. Right. Okay? I knew what the Quran completed. Your alim do not. Mm -hmm. They do not know what was completed. They do not know what came before. They mm -hmm. do not understand the metaphysics of it. They do not understand spiritual law. They may understand the Sharia, but spiritual law is a matter that is very, very different because that's what the prophet enunciated in the last mm -hmm. speech. If, 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 then, okay, that's spiritual law. That is not Sharia. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you do this, if you follow me, ah, da, 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 then God will give you dominion. When Muslims have lost dominion. Okay? Yes. Yes. And they're now fragmented 
and they're fragmented and subject to all these demonic influences. Mm. Okay, which are destroying them individually, destroying marriages, destroying their communities, and destroying their spiritual status. Okay. Mm. So it's up to young people like you, especially young men like you, to correct this to the best of your ability. Mm. Okay. I can only I'm just a signpost. I'm just like a signpost and say, okay, this is the way. And but I can't make the journey for you. You have to make the journey yourself. Okay. And just because things are fragmented and this coup has taken place and everything looks absolutely lost is no excuse not to try. Mm. Mm. We have to keep planting the seed up until the very last day. Yeah. I hope that's look, not only for me, but everyone that's listening to you, inshallah, uh, uh, we have the uh, same responsibility. Yes. Yes. But you're a leader, you see, amongst them. I, I'm just the, you know, old man who, who's uh, soon to leave the sphere behind. And all I can do, you see, uh, the, the Hindus, I like many things about the Hindus, not, uh, well, some things. <laughs> and one of their cultural norms was to take old people like me and set us outside the camp. Okay. Mm. Uh, so that, uh, or in the back room in the house, so that we no longer had a prominent position in the daily affairs, so that um, we would not interfere with governance, so that mother-in-laws would not tell daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws, da da da, what to do, okay, and take control of their dominion. Mm -hmm. So Hindus would set the old people like me outside the camp, and when the young people had trouble with a problem they could not solve, they would come see the old people. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and they would bring a food offering, and uh, they'd sit down, have a meal, and they would say, Grandfather, I have a problem. What would you do? You see, uh, how would you approach? Uh, can you help me, please? <laughs> I'm lost. Right. Right. <laughs> and that I, I like, I kind of like that. So I'm sitting outside the camp now. I'm retired. I'm no longer active in uh, academic circles. Da 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 da. And so you're like the young man coming to me outside the camp and saying, "You know, Doctor Omar, we got a problem here. We don't quite understand what's taking place. Could you help us to understand this thing?" Mm. Mm. Now, understanding gives you a weapon. You see. Now, this weapon can be uh, one of peace, inner peace, because when you don't understand something, you fear it. Mm -hmm. okay? When you understand it, the fear is wiped away, because then you see the beastie in the, in behind the bush, you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, once having understood it, you can then form a weapon against it. Mm -hmm. Or you can ask Allah specifically about this thing okay that's right that's right yeah because prayers are meant to be specific they're not just oh Allah please help me da, 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 right, right. I, yeah. no specific God is a scientist <laughs> God is a scientist of scientists okay that's one of his attributions that nobody talks about okay is it one of the 99 well it's probably in there someplace Okay, but he wants specifics. Okay, if you go to the judge, he wants specifics. He mm -hmm. wants the identity, he wants to know motive, he wants to know how it was accomplished. Da 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 da. Okay, you cannot just say, Please help me, please. No, he wants a Khalifa. Okay, not some helpless so and so who thinks they know it all. <laughs> Well, yes, I sir. That... I think this is a good place for us to stop today, inshallah. Okay, um, and we will continue the next time you allow us to continue. And uh, uh, and so, um, inshallah, uh, let, 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 let people digest this. Give them a few days to digest yeah. this, and then we'll come back in a couple of days, two or three days. Okay. Okay. okay.
So okay. that, that gives me a chance to complete some of my own work because I'm I'm doing so much. I've got so much in my inbox now huh? mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, I think it's better. So uh, okay. then let's just say wassalam, wassalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah give you a long life, inshallah, and protect you, inshallah. Inshallah, give you good health, inshallah. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Take care. Okay. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah.